questions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Directors of Sacramento Metropolitan Fire District, slated this Thursday, May 14, 2015. I'd like to start this meeting with a pledge to the flag, and I'll ask my colleague, Delman Clark, to lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Director Clark. Uh, you're welcome. The open session meeting is videotaped for cable, cable cast on Metro Cable 14, replayed on Saturday, May 16th, at two uh, 2015 at 1 p.m. and on Monday, May 18th, 2015 at 6 p.m. on Channel 14, webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. The open session meetings are also available for viewing on the district's website at www.metrofire.ca.gov. Madam Clerk, do we have any speaker cards for the public's opportunity? No speakers okay, this evening. We'll move then on to consent agendas. I'll entertain a motion for consent. Mr. Chairman, if uh, it would please the group, I move that we approve the consent agenda. Uh, second. I have a first and a second on approving the consent items. Any questions relative to those? Hearing none, seeing none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Director Monk? Aye. Orzali? Aye. Clark? Aye. Scheidegger? Aye. Wood? Aye. <laughs> Kelly? Aye. Jones? Aye. Barnes? Aye. And Gould? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. I know it comes with great disappointment in the group that we have no presentation items this morning, or this evening, rather, and so we'll move on to action items. Um, I have action item number one is to nominate a candidate for CSDA's Board of Directors. Madam Clerk, if this looks like your item. Yes, thank you, President Gould. Directors, before you this evening, there is the opportunity for you to nominate someone, whether it be a board member or a managerial employee, to CSDA's Sierra Network seat A. Um, this would be for the 2016 to 2018 regular term. It should be noted that these terms are staggered three-year terms, and we currently have nobody from Metro Fire in one of these positions. The incumbent, who is Ms. Noel Maddock, with the El Dorado Hills Community Services District, is running as the incumbent. And if we are to nominate someone, the nominations will be due by May 22nd. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for the clerk relative to this action item of nominating a candidate for the board? Yes, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to formally nominate Jim Barnes, uh, Commissioner, Director Jim Barnes, to uh, step up and uh, attempt to pr represent Sierra Network seat A. And uh, he has my full support in this. Director Barnes, you've been nominated. How say ye? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Mr. President, no, I'd be honored to serve on the board. Pardon me. Oh, okay. sorry, no. I'd uh, be honored to serve. I understand it's a it's a process, and we'll see if we can win this out. Have a strong voice for Metro Fire and the surrounding region. So, thank you very much. Okay, right. thank you very much. I have a nomination um, and an agreement to run. So, I'll entertain a Director Kelly. I will second the motion. Okay, I now have a second on the motion relative to the nomination of Director Barnes to run for the candidate's position of CSDA's board. Any other candidates? Any other questions or concerns relative to this action item? Seeing none and hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Director Monk? Aye. Orzali? Aye. Clark? Aye. Scheidegger? Aye. Wood? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Jones? Aye. Barnes? Aye. And Gould? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Director Barnes, on your nomination. Godspeed. We'll see. We'll now move. <laughs> our second item this evening of action will be, take place after we come out of closed session. I see that we've got our uh, industrial disability um, attorney in the room. However, I'd like to move just down through these items as quickly as we can, and then we'll go into closed session, and our, our, our colleagues and friends can go be with their families. With that in mind, we'll move down to President's report. I'd just like to let my colleagues on the exec team know that uh, 
after we have this meeting, I'd like to speak to both of you for just a few minutes to set some executive um, meetings up potentially for the future. So if we can do that, I have uh, no other report. We'll go now to the fire chief's report. I'm Fire Chief. Uh, keep my comments. I've got several pages here, but I'll try to go quickly. It's been three weeks since our last meeting. Um, you know, first and foremost, uh, we'd like to uh, continue to keep uh, the Fresno Fire Captain Derns in our prayers. Quick update on that. He continues to, um, he's doing well. He's fighting very hard. He's um, and working through some additional skin grafts and surgeries and that type of thing. But I would like to say there's two ways of helping to donate to him and his family and the, to the cause. There's a 14th annual Battle of the Badges blood drive, and that's um, going on this month. And it's firefighters, police, and sheriff, and other badge carrying personnel, and they compete for the, um, the blood drive. And I believe this is actually being done through the Central California Blood Center. So we can get some more information um, on that about locations where you could donate. Um, more than 22,000 people have signed up to donate blood to help patients in the Valley Hospitals through this program. So it's a great event. And this year's drive is dedicated to Fresno Fire Captain Peter Dern. Uh, also, there's a, and I believe it's in your board packet, the, um, it's the Adrenaline Challenge coin that was created um, as a collectible coin for Captain Dern to help raise for his um, funds for his family during his recovery. And uh, it's available through the family or the Fire Family Foundation for $25, and the Adrenaline Challenge <coughs> Coins is donating all their time and the proceeds of this effort um, to the family, which is a great opportunity to donate. Um, I'd also like to talk tonight about um, the preliminary budget. We met, met last Monday, uh, or you know, Monday on the 11th, and we talked about um, our preliminary budget that will be coming due to the Board of Directors the very first week, uh, the first meeting in June. Um, we've talked about having that to the board uh, instead of doing it on the very last possible meeting um, before it's due on July 1st, um, we want to do them on the first meeting of that month so that we have time to reflex if we had a quorum issue or something along those lines. And you'll also see some discussion about that um, down the road as it relates to potentially talking about um, the timing of meetings, whether they be policy and or finance as it relates to those so that we don't um, impact ourselves by a scheduling conflict uh, on meetings. So more to come on that. Um, just a cursory view into that. Um, this will be similar to the last six years. Uh, uh, it's going to be some tough choices moving forward on the budget. We have not turned the corner in terms of doing the things that we'd like to do, and more to, more to follow on that. But we've had some active discussion. We'll have another budget meeting on the 18th. Um, Labor has been um, actively involved in that process, and we will be bringing a, um, a budget forth um, as, as customary in June. Also, um, let's see, we had a, a very good productive meeting um, with um, Deputy, Deputy um, Director of uh, the County Execs Deputy, I'm sorry, Nav Gill, and also the Airport Director, John Wheat. We met and um, talked about some common issues moving forward, and uh, Nav Gill and I have on the, uh, the docket scheduled meetings just to keep the open um, dialogue between us and the county. i also like to say that I had the opportunity to uh, attend the Metro Fire Chiefs Conference. Uh, we talked about that a little bit last time, um, and that was in Las Vegas. Um, good interaction, international delegation all over the world, China, China Sweden, um, big contingency from Canada, the UK, Australia, and all the large fire departments throughout the state of, uh, or United States, and very similar issues, surprisingly, <laughs> as we talk um, across the country. So good dialogue there. Uh, we had a very nice uh, opportunity to, um, to meet with the Ranch Cordova elected officials reception at the Mather Jet Services and uh, enjoyed seeing Director Wood and Director Jones there and we had a great opportunity to collaborate with all of the uh, elected officials here in Rancho Cordova. And let's see, Chief Taylor attended a uh, assembly budget subcommittee hearing yesterday for hazmat by rail downtown with um, um, testified in front of the committee and uh, a lot of good work going on on that to keep this community safe as the discussion accrued by rail is, um, is entertained as it, as it uh, applies to public safety in the region. And also, um, we had a town hall meeting on May 6th um, that was scheduled. Uh, we had it at Station 65, um, had some good conversation. Uh, we are attempting to be going out into the fire stations and out into the our 
our community, as it were, in the fire service. We have better acoustics in this room, and uh, so we always have challenges with that. But uh, we have another one um, scheduled for August 26th um, at 10 o'clock at Station 50. So any board of director that would like to attend that is more than welcome. Um, and then we'll have another one later in the fall. Um, Saturday night, I'll be attending um, the Citrus Heights Police Activities League um, fundraiser at 5.30 p.m. at the Citrus Heights Community Center. On the 21st, um, you can listen to my face for radio again on KFBK. That's going to be every third week I, I uh, attend that at 7.40 in the morning. We are going to be meeting with the CalPERS executive staff um, later in the month on the 27th to uh, continue to build our relationships between our two agencies. Uh, we've had a lot of interaction back and forth, good positive working relationship with CalPERS, uh, but we're going to continue to meet with them. Again, keep the, on the calendars the June 22nd through the 28th is the USGA Senior Open. We've talked about that numerous times, but it's coming close. Um, we have a new hire. I'm very excited to welcome Rourke Crusto as a logistics technician. He was hired on the 11th of May. And of course, uh, we have many retirements all the time, but I'll tell you in this particular group, uh, we have Captain Barry Taylor, 24 years of service. We have Fleet Manager Fred Bino, nine years of service. Firefighter Greg Luckett, 23 years of service. Engineer Russell Powell, 26 years of service. And Assistant Chief Scott Clough, 24 years of service. And collectively, 106 years retiring just in that small group. Um, once again, I, I caution that um, the folks coming into this organization have big shoes to fill. And it's a testament of um, the transition that we're making in um, rapid fashion. Let's see, we have a recruitment of uh, single role and EMT paramedics. Uh, final filing date for that is the 28th of May. And then we have a career development opportunity for fire academy drill instructors. Um, final filing date for that is the 29th of May at 4 p.m. And that's for all ranks of so firefighter, engineer, and captains. I'd like to uh, acknowledge 25 years of service to fire inspector Tracy Olsesi. Um, long lineage um, with the agency and uh, excellent um, member of our team in the community risk reduction. And of course, a promotion to Captain Jim Ellis. Um, that was on the 7th of May. So Jim is now moving up the ranks there as we knew he would. Um, and I'd like to give a special uh, acknowledgement to Station 61 on the B shift. It was uh, engine, or, uh, engine and Medic 61, and there's Captain Winner, Engineer Keebler, Firefighter Perryman, Firefighter Serrano, and Firefighter Monocle. And what they did was on their own, self-initiated, they went out and um, developed dialogue with St. John Vianney School in Rancho Cordova. And they taught um, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders there. And they did 70 kids taught hands-on um, CPR. And that was all a grassroots effort of them reaching out. Of course, our crews across the district are doing wonderful things every day. But I wanted to specifically um, shout out to that. And then last, I'd just like to say I was very proud of uh, our agency yesterday. They had a very dynamic um, urban interface fire on the bluff as we have a very large fire problem on the bluff. But I'll tell you, there's a bunch of things that came together. If you look um, from the aerial photographs of that, you had a very large um, separation zone where the fuels had been removed from the structures. Um, that has been done. Um, very deliberately, um, Captain Vestal, um, Chris Vestal, as you've seen him at this, um, at this venue, talking about training and defensible space in our interface areas. Um, so that was a, a great opportunity for that to be seen in motion of exactly how that would happen. You have to understand the fire conditions that we saw yesterday are similar to what you would see in the end of July. <laughs> Um, however, you had 60, you know, mid 60s degree temperatures, and I believe you had 43 percent relative humidities, which are good, favorable conditions for us. Typically, you have a wind, and this the, the fuel moisture is extremely dry, and um, you had this fire raging up the hill. Early intervention at the captain level. I on, hearing on my radio in my car, I heard the engine captain call for initial resources as he was leaving the fire station. That accelerated that opportunity get the lag time for the resources coming. On top of that, we had a, a very interesting and unique air operation that um, 
was absolutely spot on. We had a National Guard helicopter that was actually out training at Folsom Lake, and they were doing their Bambi bucket operations. Now, bear in mind, we're having a transitional fire season, um, and our, our copter is not staffed until next week on the 20th. And so this uh, helicopter is out there working, and so they're flying back, see the smoke column. The sheriff's helicopter is up, and uh, they have com common communication with the National Guard helicopter, which we cannot talk to necessarily um, the National Guard to the ground. So the other little piece of this that's interesting is our own battalion chief, um, um, Tom Neville, is an air ops guy, and he's on the call. And so this coordinated effort between individuals with helicopter knowledge gets the appropriate available resource from the National Guard, which is unusual, and they're dropping water on this fire at the right time um, using the law enforcement and fire collaboration with National Guard to put out the fire at the Bluff Lane fire. So highly unusual that that would all come together like that, but I would tell you uh, what an effective outcome. And um, truly the folks um, got the best of everybody's effort yesterday that live on the Bluff there. So I just wanted to close out with that and um, if you have any further comments, I'd be willing to entertain those. Questions for the chief. Okay, thank you. I'm assuming that Chief Taylor is um, going to be replay. There he is. It's Chief Taylor. Our operations report. Good evening, President Gould, directors, Chief Wells. Uh, Eric Bridge, Assistant Chief Operations. I'm going to fill in for Chief Taylor tonight. Um, since our last board meeting on April 23rd, uh, we Metro Fires had 17 working structure fires and 25 vegetation fires. Uh, from the EMS operations, we were dispatched to 4,207 calls, resulting in, in approximately 3,000 transports. And our partners at AMR had three dispatches and two transports. Um, from the uh, public information side of things, our April viewership was uh, 802,181, which uh, relates to a total local market publicity value of $58,421. Um, looking ahead, we're uh, hosting that regional media event that Chief Wells was referring to a little bit ago, and that's going to be on May 20th at Rossmore Bar. That's going to be with uh, five agencies, which would be us, media, uh, Metro Fire Hosting, uh, Folsom Fire, Sacramento Fire, Kasumnas Fire, and Cal Fire. And um, that's going to basically be our transition into peak preparedness levels for wildland season. So that should be a good event. Um, We'll have some of our crews out there as well. So look for that uh, on your local channels. Um, let's see what else I have here. Truck 23. Uh, we're going to be putting that into service here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, it's going to be a, a good opportunity for Citrus Heights. The mayor and the council members are going to be at Station 23 with an official putting into service. So uh, more details to follow with um, that um, it's going to be a good event as well. I know Citrus Heights is very excited about it as much as we are. Uh, uh, Antelope Summerfest is coming. May 30th, uh, we'll get the static display, some community services, and sidewalk CPR. That's going to be from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And that's going to be at the Antelope Community Park, which is right adjacent to Station 26. And let's see, lastly... Had a chance to speak to Captain Chris Vestal a little bit about that, that fire. Um, you know, there was an opportunity with that FEMA grant, public safety, I think it was public safety. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact title of that grant, but it was just, uh, I think it was fire protection safety grant, just shy of a million dollars. And he had the opportunity to have a NFPA come out and be the lead instructor along with some of our instructors to teach at community workshops. Three of those workshops were at Station 32. And uh, which was turns out to be about 40 or 50 of folks that attended that workshop over those three workshops were um, residents in that area, mainly that Curra Downs area. So it's, I think it was pretty safe to say I was able to get out there last night and um, without the defensible space and the air operations, that thing definitely would have had high probability of some structural ignition. So um, we're big supporters of that that wildfire protection plan. So just wanted to give a big plug there for air operations and Captain Chris Vestals in that program. Great job on all that stuff. And that was Spartan 864 for those who have any interest of knowing what the National, National Guard helicopter was. So 
I don't know if anybody has friends with the National Guard, but those guys were good players for us. And the way that went down, just so you know, too, we just found out they happened to be training over Folsom. They, made, they saw the column of smoke, made contact with the Sheriff's Department. The Sheriff's Department made contact with our local dispatch, and then all the things lined up perfectly. So anyway, good times. Any questions? Chief Bridge, just one yes. thing. On uh, the initiation of truck, truck 23 <coughs> in Citrus Heights, will you ensure that at least two of these directors are made aware of that and are invited to attend and participate? I think any time we do those kinds of things in, in yeah. this political body's uh, arena, they need to be at the top of that invitation list. Absolutely. We'll make More sure so you... than the mayor. Yes. <laughs> Got it. We'll make sure you guys are at the top of the list. Okay. Very okay. good. All right. We good with that? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. General Counsel's report on... And none at this time. Okay, thank you. Local 522, anyone representing that organization body that would like to speak to us? Seeing none, we'll move on. Committee and delegate reports. I've shared the idea with my colleagues on the exec that we'll uh, meet after the meeting to pick some times. Uh, come GAPA, Chief Holbrook. Thank you very much, Chief. Appreciate that. Director Kelly on the California Fire Rescue Training JPA. Uh, yes, uh, the training uh, or the Fire Rescue Training JPA has not met since I last reported out. We have been scheduled for a meeting. That meeting was postponed, and I have yet to be informed of a new date. Thank you very much. Director Monk on the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee was scheduled to meet this evening, but was canceled. And uh, I don't have anything for the next meeting yet. So. Okay, thank you very much. Director Scheidegger on policy. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there are insufficient uh, agenda items for the policy committee to meet. However, they will be coming up, I'm sure, and we'll determine when the next meeting will occur. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, my colleagues on the board will finish up uh, briefly with board member questions and comments so we can move to closed session and let our colleagues here in the audience go home. We'll start with Director Monk on my right. I'll do a real quick one. Congratulations to the people that retired. Welcome to the new people that are working with us. They've got a long road ahead of them and many challenges. And uh, what else did we have? Congratulations to Tracy that's been here 25 years. That's hard to, hard to remember. And promotion for Jim Ellis and It'll be nice to see truck company back in service, truck 23, and, and uh, I still wanted to wish Fred Bino a, a good retirement because he's been here a long time supporting our maintenance division and keeping those people going. And 106 years of service in those people that were, were retiring. How long does it take to get that kind of experience and to uh, for the new people filling in to gain the knowledge that we're losing there. They, they have a big hill ahead of them. But it's not like this agency doesn't have people that will help them get, get in their positions and get going quickly. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Director Rosali. Uh, no comments for this evening. Thank you. Director Clark. Yeah. Um. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thoughts and prayers for uh, Captain Peter Dunn on his recovery, uh, the, the captain from Fresno. Also uh, wanna warn, uh, I urge caution out there uh, with these uh, wildfires and just be careful out there. This is a fire season and uh, just we just urge everybody out there to be careful. Thank That's you very much. Chairman. Candidate Barnes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just glad to be back, I missed the last session. Uh, but I have to say it's amazing my other assignment is what I do for a living, I would say, is working with the members of Metro Fire. I have a chance to respond a lot of times with them and see the first class organization that it continues to be of saving lives, working together in partnership with the, the resources around them. So I appreciate that greatly. And uh, thank you and welcome to the new hires and good luck in retirement for the ones that are going out the door. Thank you very much. Director Jones. Thank you. Supportive comments from the fire chief and my fellow directors. Okay, Director Kelly. Yes, I would like to offer congratulations to those individuals that are retiring. Thank the chief for his report. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if anybody else happened to catch about every minute of that on TV like I did, uh, but it was with great uh, anticipation for a good turnout, and that's exactly what happened. It was a good turnout. Okay, thank you very much, Director Wood. I have nothing that hasn't already been said. Okay, Director Scheidegger. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to do a little shout out here for, for SAC Metro, uh, for that fire in the bluffs. I represent Division 5. And, uh, you know, as usual, Metro did a great job in responding and saving property and lives. But there's another element of this that I want to keep coming back to, and that's that Metro hustled the grant and did that wildlife protection training. I attended some of those, um, and, and Captain Vestal and other people that were associated did an outstanding job. Once again, Metro was out in front. We went and got the grant. We had great community interaction, and I think it did pay off. I mean, I think the, the community reacted. They, they did react and protect their properties, and there is a real money-in-the-bank response. Good work, Metro. Thank you. Thank you, Dire Thank you Director Scheidegger. Um, I just want to say, keep doing good. <laughs> With that, we'll go into closed session, and folks, go see your families. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll open back up this session and we'll have our attorney report out on actions in closed session. <clears throat> uh, thank you, President Gould. The board met in closed session on the following matters. Uh, number one, uh, pursuant to government code section 54956.9 to consider and discuss the industrial disability retirement of employee Russell Grieve. No action was taken on that item. Uh, rather, it is now up for uh, vote in the open session. Uh, for the uh, uh, board's consideration. Uh, the uh, board also met uh, in a conference with its legal counsel uh, with respect to pending litigation of the four cases listed in the agenda uh, tonight. No action was taken. The board met uh, with its uh, designated district labor negotiator, Chief Wells, um, with respect to the uh, bargaining units uh, identified in the closed session agenda. No action was taken. And the board finally met on a personnel matter under government code section 54957B1 to evaluate the uh, board clerk. No action was taken. Thank you. Appreciate that. We'll now move back to action items. We'll address now action item number two, and I'll entertain a motion for the industrial disability retirement of Russell Green. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. We approve the industrial I disability have a first. I'll second. second. I have a triple. Who wants to arm wrestle? Okay, we'll go to Director Monk on the second. Any questions related to this action item from members of the board? Hearing none and seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Director Monk? Aye. Orzali? Aye. Clark? Aye. Scheidegger? Aye. Wood? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Jones? Aye. Barnes? Aye. And Gould? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, Firefighter Russell Greaves. Godspeed to you, my friend. Well, now, uh, any other closing comments from this body? Hearing none and seeing none, this matter is now closed. Adjourned. No, not yet. I, I'm, I'm making notes. I'm, I'm doing like an old gambling thing. I've got my notes. Yeah.